Nuke comes with a fantastic tool for profiling lens distortion, removing lens distortion, and adding lens distortion to images. The tool is called Lens Distortion of all things. If you hit tab and start typing Lens Distortion, you'll get the node. There's more than one way to use it. One of the easiest ways to use it is an automatic lens distortion discovery mode. But in order to use it in that mode, you must have shot a distortion grid like this. It can either be checkerboards or a grid pattern. And you have to fill the entire frame with this pattern like this. This image was shot on a GoPro 4, which has a very fisheye lens with a lot of distortion in it. So if I attach lens distortion to this image and I go to the grid analysis tab, you'll see by default it's set up to use checkerboard, but you can also use a, a, a grid. Basically, that's what this thin line mode is. And then to do the automatic analysis, I just say analyze grid. Click that button. And if I view the lens distortion node, let's see. It looks like Nuke has properly discovered the distortion of this lens based on the checkerboard pattern. And it puts the parameters here in the lens distortion tab. Now, I tend to be a little bit suspicious when the center shifts this much. Because as you can see, it's shifted quite a bit. It is doing a great job of removing the lens distortion though. So depending on your situation, you might want to either center this or leave it as is. Now let's say that you have a real world example like this. Now that you've determined the lens distortion of your lens, how do you use it? So here's a situation where I shot an image with a fisheye lens and I had the time to collect the grid that went with that lens. This lens that was used to shoot this is a zoom lens that zooms through a lot of different fisheye focal lengths. So you have to make sure that you shoot a distortion chart for every possible focal length of that lens. Let's say, you know, you could maybe do it at every uh, stop on the lens. So if the, if it has markings for say 13 millimeter and 15 millimeter, just try to shoot a chart for each marking on the lens and then you can determine close enough the distortion of the lens from that. If you want to determine the uh, information about what lens was used to shoot an image, the read nodes in Nuke have a metadata tab where you can see a lot of that information. Now it's not going to tell us which exact lens was used, but it will tell us the focal length typically of the lens that was on the camera. So if we look here we can filter and we can see the focal length of the lens was 13 millimeters so i could go back after the fact set up that same lens at 13 millimeter and shoot a chart so i'm going to drop another lens distortion node on there let's analyze this one it seems to have done a pretty good job it's not perfect but pretty close and if I want to apply this distortion undistortion now to my image I just attach the lens distortion node to that image and it's doing a pretty good job of undistorting that removing that lens distortion from the image now what if you don't have the time to shoot a chart or you have no idea what the lens that was used was. You have no way of determining that. Well, the lens distort node, lens distortion node has tools for determining what the distortion of the image was. So here I have a, a bridge that has some obvious bowing distortion in it. I know this is a straight bridge though. I was there. So let's try to get that distortion out of there. Rather than using the automatic grid discovery, we'll use line analysis mode. And to use this, you have to, to tell the lens distortion node a few things about the distortion you're seeing in the image. So we'll turn drawing mode on. And what I'm doing is I'm going to pick straight lines that I know are in this image. I'm left clicking. 
to draw a line along this hand, this uh, guardrail on the bridge. Just uh, pick a few lines. And when I'm done, I click the last one here with the left click. I'm going to click right click. And that will end that line. And let's do one more. We'll do one more along the other side of the bridge here. And it's still in draw mode. So let me see, make sure that I can find the same feature all the way through. We'll do the top of this fence like thing. So there's one and then right click to close that line so that's not a lot of lines but this may be enough that the Lens Distortion node can determine the distortion in the image. I will click, I'm going to turn off Drawing Mode so they don't accidentally draw more lines. And I will click Analyze Lines. And there we go. Nuke has gone through. And based on what it was able to determine from my line drawing, it has undistorted the image. Let's toggle it on and off. I'm going to disable it here. So here's no lens distortion or as best that we can remove it. Bridge looks straight. And there's with lens distortion still on the lens. A third way that you can use the lens distortion node is via image analysis. Image analysis is appropriate for situations where you have a moving plate like this with enough details in it that it can find the lines on its own and then it will uh, go through and analyze the plate and create its undistortion solution based on features that it has tracked automatically. So how you use it is uh, this plate has a lot of motion I don't want to track uh, these actors that are in the scene. So I've created a mask that will just GMAT them out. And to use the mask, you have to set the mask here. Under mask, I'm using the source alpha. And you can set the analysis range if, if you only want to do a subset of the clip. I want to track the entire clip, so I'm going to say source clip range. This is pretty much a free camera. So I'm going to leave this at free camera and I'd like to watch the features be tracked to make sure everything is going okay as it's going. So I'm going to select features and tracks as the feature overlay. Now I'll just hit analyze sequence and nuke will go through and automatically find features in the shot to try to create, essentially create lines on its own. It's also looking for a little bit of the 3D structure of the scene and it'll use that in its analysis. First it'll track forward and then it will track backwards. That took about a minute and a half and let's look at it. I'll hide the matte overlay and I'll turn off these features. Seems to have done a pretty good undistort so if uh, you've got a plate like this that's got enough motion in it in the plate that that features can be tracked to figure out a little bit of structure of the scene and lines automatically this is a viable option to manual line analysis or having a grid chart shot otherwise this won't work you can't use this on a still frame that's the only real caveat